Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host AMF1534 here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Safecracker. And last time, we made our way into the yellow bedroom after knocking out some interesting puzzles up here on the second floor of the mansion, including this cool little laser door thing that we did last time, which led us right over to this thing. <laughs> Quite possibly the easiest thing that we've dealt with up to this point. But if you could believe it, we're going to be dealing with one in just a few minutes that's probably easier than that. <laughs> I know. Crazy, huh? Mm. And in the process of doing that, we, uh, we got the magnetic pass, which we'll be putting to use here in just a moment in the games room, along with the old Snooky rules. And if there's anything that we know about Snooky, is that she has minimal amounts of rules because of the fact that she is a slut. <laughs> so now that we've got shots fired, we can go leave this room and we'll head across the hallway over to the games room to do the Snooker puzzle, which... Uh, bad memories of this one, man. The, the, first, the first time that I did this puzzle, it, I'm going to say it took me probably about three hours just because I couldn't really figure out what it was they were actually asking me to figure out. But now that I know, it's it's much much easier. So what we're going to be doing in this puzzle, it's another basic uh, another basic keypad puzzle, and all the numbers that we're going to need for it are going to be predicated off of what we see on the snooker table. So we'll take the magnetic pass key and toss it in the old slot key there, and uh, now let's go take a look at our table. Let's take some visual inventory. So as you can see, we got you know a bunch of we got a whole slew of balls out here of different colors, and so if you refer to the rule sheet. They, they are all given a, a denomination of, of points or numbers or whatever. So as you can see, all those red balls, they're, they're one. You got the blue ball is five, and that brown one over there, that little poopy brown one is, is a four. So the way, to, uh, the way to, to figure out the first half of the, pass, of the password that we need for that keypad, it's actually quite simple. All of these red balls, all you have to do is count them up, and you'll, you'll notice if you count all these bad boys, you will come up with 11. So that actually knocks out the entire first half of it. Very, very easy. Um, so the, the bigger challenge is finding out the second half of it. And it's, it's actually now that, when, now that if you know it, it's actually quite easy. So let's take some more inventory of the table here. As you can see, the, the other balls that aren't the red ones, we got the, the pink, blue, and brown ones. So that will account for 6, 5, and 4. So the only ones that we haven't accounted for yet at this point is the yellow 2, uh, the green 3, and the black 7. So what we need to do is we need to go look around the table, as there have been some balls that are pocketed. Speaking of which, there's that yellow 2 right there. So the only, uh, the only two that aren't accounted for now are 3 and 7. So let's go look around some more. We got a uh, we got a red one right here, which that doesn't play into this formula at all because it's not actually on the table. So that is another one that's been pocketed though. And on this side, there's another red one there. So that, if you come back around to the front, those those are all the balls. So I mean, you'll notice that the three and seven are nowhere to be found, and that's the key. Those because they're nowhere to be found here, that actually makes up the rest of our passcode. So we've got 11 from the red balls and a th 3 and 7 from these. So you go go up here, you put in 1137, and bingo, there it is. It's a great puzzle. I, I, I loved that. When I finally figured out, I was like, you fucking guys, you, you really did it. I love that they did a blend of using what's on the table and then using what's left out of the table. I don't even know where those two balls are at. They're just, they're, I don't know, they're fucking somewhere, maybe like in somebody's asshole, I don't know. You never know, like I said earlier, I mean, billionaires, they got weird, weird things that they like, <laughs> so you never know. Now out of that, we got the fountain plug and a lever, which the lever we won't be using for a little bit, but the fountain plug, that is something that we're going to be using immediately, and this is this is important. This is going to be one of the last puzzles that we're going to be doing on the bottom floor down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right out here to the winter garden, right out here to the fountain, and you'll see that there's there's other fountain plugs here. We've been missing one this whole time. So we're gonna go plop this thing in here. And this is actually a really intriguing puzzle, because as you'll see, these things are you know spewing out water into these little, these little holes right here. And if you look in the middle, you'll see there's a key inside of the fountain. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go leave the room, we're gonna go around to the museum, and uh, then I'll explain how this, how this little puzzle works. So, with this, as you'll see, um, with next to these fountain plugs, there are four pressure plates on the floor. 
and you have to figure out the right combination um, because you'll see when you step on one, it will move the position of where the water is being spewed into the hole here, which you can uh, you can take that however you want. <laughs> but um, the obviously the object here is to raise the water up high enough so that you can take the key out of the middle because we really really need that thing to move really any further from here. So this one, it's actually quite easy if you know what you're doing. If you keep going right you will eventually have the water raise all the way up. It's, it's, uh, it's an extremely simple thing, but if you don't know to go right continuously, it's, uh, it's a tough one. This is another one that took a lot of trial and error for me, uh, as, as any of these really did, but I, you know, I'd start going left, and I thought it was going to be a more intricate thing where you'd have to go like right a number of times and left a couple of times to kind of like finagle it around. Kind of like the dumbwaiter puzzle that we did where you have to like go up and then down and then back up a number of times to really get it into the right spot. But this one, uh, it's, it's a lot more simple than that. And so if you've done it correctly, this thing will end up raising up right to the proper spot. And then we can steal that key right out of there. So the biggest thing to make sure that this works for you, you want to start your your little uh, your little rotation around the fountain over and on the museum side. Otherwise, it's going to take you a lot longer to do it. So that's why when we put the fountain plug in there, uh, we just we left and came back around. I, I don't think it really would have mattered one way or the other if we just went straight over to here. Uh, you just want to make sure that's the one that you're starting on. So with that, we get this double key, and uh, we're going to go put that to use immediately as well. So. Now we got to go right back up the stairs. It's uh, it's not going to be something that we're like it's it's vital to have right this second because there's another room that we need to go into directly after this that's going to have the more important piece. But uh, this is uh, it's, it's a good start, and we might as well knock it out while it's here. So this door has been locked, and uh, this double key is the one that does it. There's so many weird like weird shaped keys in this house, like. Duncan is a smart man. Like he wasn't a guy that he wanted to have the same type of lock and everything. <laughs> really is. So, welcome to the Violet Bedroom. This is uh, this is actually probably the most important room in the entire game, and uh, you will find out why a little bit later. So, let's go. Uh, let's go read this note right here on whatever the hell this thing is. Let's have a look at this letter, dearest Uncle Duncan. I hope this letter finds you in good health and that you are enjoying these first few days of June. I don't know if you received my previous letters, as I haven't received a reply. I do not want to sound impolite, but without your help, we will have no choice but to move. The rent is just too much for us. I really don't want to leave our home. I know you understand. Yours affectionately, Elizabeth. Man, Elizabeth is lobbying really hard to get some of that cash, which we found out, I think it was in the last episode from Edward, that she is a lying sack of shit, and she is well within her means. I mean, both her and her husband make pretty solid money. They're both just a, well, mainly her. She's just a, a greedy little whore that really wants to have an extra slice of the pie. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Edward, you, you fucking awesome man, you. Now... There's another bathroom here, which, if you guys have been, you know, playing along here, there's another one for you to jot down. And it's just another another lavish bathroom, which is kind of crazy. Like, of all the places that we've seen him putting safes in this in this home, I mean, he has not put a single one in a bathroom yet. So, I mean, at least he's, you know, at least he's smart enough to keep bathrooms a sacred area, you know? Good man right there. Now... We got this little thing here, and this is this is the one I was talking about. This might be the easiest puzzle in the whole damn thing, besides the the little power switch one. So we take this little small gold key we've been holding on to for a few episodes, and you go and toss it right in there, and it opens up the music box. It is the slowest opening box on the history of the pl on the history no in the history of the planet. But as it opens, we've got two new little items that come out of that little hidden drawer there. We've got a small iron key and a screen and key card reader, which that's that's a tricky one. That puzzle, when we get to that one, oh boy, that is a that one's a doozy. This little small iron key, we're not going to use that just yet, but that's going to have a well, it's not going to be a really 
Well, it's going to have it. It'll have its own shred of importance, just not like the most important thing in the world. And then there's this door. Two keys for the same door. Hmm, that's a bit much. With a crazy little keyhole, too. A triple key. We've had regular keys, we've had double keys, and now there's triple keys. This, my friends, is the most important door in the whole thing. So keep that in mind. That is why this violet room holds the importance that it does. So, but we won't we won't be dealing with that for a little bit of time, so don't worry about it. Now, you remember the door that we opened last, uh, I think it was last time, with that museum puzzle with the currency things that <laughs> people were giving me all sorts of fire for. We got this safe over here, which I'm not going to do that one today, because that one's going to take a little bit of extra time. Kind of. It's, it's not that bad, but it's, it's bad enough. We're going to go over to this one. This is an interesting one. Now this one, it says, Call Sarah. So... Call Sarah? <laughs> Easier said than done. Now, keep that in mind, because what we have to do is we have to go in... We have to go all the way back to the blue bedroom to figure this out. This is, this, this is a little... This is a nice little intricate little deal here. So keep in mind that said, Call Sarah. Because we're going to go back to the blue bedroom. I don't think I've actually showed you this, this little thing yet. So, we'll go into the blue bedroom and go to this crazy looking contraption. And by the way, this is where that iron key goes. So we might as well just toss it in there. We're not going to use it yet. There's actually two separate puzzles that go on with this machine. So, take a look at this phone with all of its crazy configurations of where all the letters go. And if you look... Um, remember the whole call Sarah thing. All you have to do is find the numbers um, that would spell out Sarah. So we got eight, we've got six, we've got two, six, five. So eight, six, two, six, five. Now we're gonna leave this room and we're gonna go back into the into that little that little office again. And that, believe it or not, is going to be the answer to that safe. How smart, you know? You wouldn't think it would really have any correlation to that, but... Bingo! Great idea! Great idea, Mr. Duncan! The old Duncan. man must have really loved her. <laughs> the old man must have loved her so much that he left a steering wheel inside of a safe in the library. Now that steering wheel, that's gonna, that's gonna be, an, that's an interesting puzzle in itself too. We'll deal with that one next time. Nice one. I didn't think you'd manage. Hmm. It's signed Duncan W. Adams. <laughs> oh, that fucking guy. He's, he's a real piece of work, he is. Okay, so, now I, I think this is a nice place to stop. We got a whole, whole little, uh, little group of things that we can do on the next time around, so... When we come back on the next installment of Let's Play Save Cracker, we've got that steering wheel that we can uh, that we can mess around with. We've got the screen and key card reader that we need to mess around with. Um, we also have that lever, and then there's also figuring out uh, that phone puzzle uh, back in the other room where I put that small iron key. So we've got a, a lot of different things to do, and so when we come back, we will uh, we will tackle those things. But until then, my friends, this is your host AMF1534 saying thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.